in biology, it is important to understand how to write up HSC biology experiments. This may include writing a hypothesis, writing up a method, and also recalling results. So how to write up experiments in the HSC? They are very, very structured, and it is important to follow this structure so that you follow all the requirements in experiments. The title should state what is being tested. It must show the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. If you're unsure about this, watch the video, Independent and Dependent Variables. An example of a title may include something like this, the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. It should say what's actually happening in that experiment. So some title examples include the effect of sunlight on plant growth, the effect of exhaled breath on water, on the pH of water, the effect of exercise on blood pressure. So the aim, your, you do not need an aim for every experiment and sometimes it's more appropriate to have an aim rather than a hypothesis. This includes looking at red blood cells. You don't have a hypothesis looking at red blood cells, so an aim would be appropriate. So it describes what your actual goal is and you can use words to begin your sentence such, like, such as to verify, to investigate, to measure, to determine, to compare, or to calculate. I've got some examples for you here. So an aim might be to determine if the amount of sunlight will affect plant growth, or to investigate the effects of exhaled breath on water. Another aim could be to measure the effects of exercise on blood pressure. Hypothesis. The hypothesis is actually a statement and it needs to be very clear and specific about what you're testing. It needs to state the relationship between the independent and dependent variable. So an example of a format of how to write it up may be if the independent variable is, you need to describe the change, then the dependent variable will describe that change. An example is if the plant is exposed to more sunlight, then the plant growth will increase. Or another example, exhaled breath will decrease the pH of water. Can you see it's just a statement? It's not a question. It's a statement of what will happen, even if you're not sure of the results. If your results disprove that, that's fine. You can just say that in your discussion. Another example, with increased exercise, blood pressure will increase. Materials, now this is written up in dot point format. It is very important just so when you need to refer quickly, you can see it's dot points and it's very easy to understand. Some common equipment include beakers, measuring cylinders, spoons, stirring rods, microscope slides, microscopes, petri dish or agar plates. Now agar plates, you will be coming across this in HSC biology. It's actually a nutrient like a jelly and they put it in the petri dish and you can grow microbes such as bacteria on them. Inoculation loops and staining chemicals such as toluidine blue. The method must be written in step form, even in the last examination. So it cannot be written in sentence form or dot points. It must be written step one, step two, step three, and step four. It must be clear and concise, and you must be written so that anyone can redo that experiment. If you skip steps, your teacher will not give you full marks. An example of a method might include this one, and I'm doing the pH um, of exhaled breath in water. So in pairs, take two medium-sized beakers and label them A and B. Half fill each with water. Can you see I'm being consistent with both? Put in 10 to 10, 20 drops of pH indicator to color the water nicely. Using a straw, gently blow into beaker, into the water in beaker A for 10 seconds. Now I know it says A here, but the results actually, it's B. So I want you to imagine that says beaker B. Observe the color of the water, possible change. Repeat step four at least three more times in that same beaker. At the end of your experiment, measure the pH in both beaker A and beaker B. Record in a table and graph the results. So here, our results should be written in a table where possible. 
This includes the raw calculations and it's your observations only. You do not put any other results from any past experiments here. So there's no interpretations in the results section. The interpretations are left for the discussion only. The best written results will include both a table and a graph. And if you do hand in an experiment, you may lose marks if you don't hand in a graph as well. If your experiment is unable to be illustrated in a table, you can also draw your results. So say for example you're looking at an agar plate with bacteria and fungi, you can draw those instead of putting it in a table. So if you are drawing the microorganisms, this is what you would draw. You would draw the petri dish, outline, and then you can draw the bacteria and fungi in that. So you should title this, it should be labelled and also show a scale, especially if it's a microscope slide. Other results you may not be able to illustrate in table are microscope slides. Okay. You must label it for full marks and if you don't label it, you will lose marks. This is an example of the experiment um, method before. It's an example of a table. So as you can see, this table illustrates the pH of water after breathing through a straw into water with pH indicator. We have beaker A here and beaker B. Initial recording of pH, and you can see after 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 and 40. So for this, we have seven. pH of seven is actually the pH of water. And beaker A, ah, it is beaker A. Beaker A, we're blowing into. So as we blow into beaker A, you can see there is a decrease in pH. However, beaker B, we do not blow into. So the pH actually stays quite consistent. If beaker B was not consistent, then the results of this would actually be invalid. So as you can see here, there, you should draw either a column or a line graph, but because this one has two continuous data, a line graph is wonderful for this one, and you must include a key. This is an example of a graph breathing into water and measuring the pH changes. A discussion includes the interpretation of these results. So what do these results demonstrate? Both beakers A and B had an initial measurement at a pH of seven. Beaker B became more acidic over time and finished at a pH of 5. It may have reached its lowest pH reading as carbon dioxide in the blood has a similar pH. Beaker A stayed neutral at a pH of 7. This is because the, there was no carbon dioxide to make it more acidic. Now in your discussion, you need to answer these following questions. How can your experiment be improved if you were to repeat it? How can you extend your experiment? For the exhaled breath experiment, it may be improved by extending the time to make sure that the pH reached its actual lowest limit. If you cannot improve the experiment, you can always suggest repeating it. It is very important in experiments to repeat the experiments. If you can't think of anything, at least say repeat. Are you replicating a well-known experiment? If so, how does your results compare to previous results? If your results differ, suggest reasons why they were different. Perhaps you had a different setup, perhaps you had different equipment. There could be different reasons why. Is the experiment valid? This is very important. Are there any mistakes in the experiment? This actually leads to the validity of your experiment as well. Perhaps you haven't been able to keep your variables constant for some reason. Maybe you took the reading at every 15 seconds by mistake. You need to actually put this in your discussion. Always mention in your discussion the problems you have come across in your experiment. If you're doing an experiment on plants, you must get the same species of plant at the same age and the same height, otherwise your experiment is invalid. And this could be very difficult. So, you need to have a control to compare your results to. And this beaker B is actually the control in this experiment. We blow into only one beaker, not both, because we need something to compare it to. If we only blew into beaker A, we wouldn't actually have something to compare it to. So it is important to have a control in every experiment you do. 
Okay, this beaker is not breathed into. This is because of the pH in this beaker changes, the results become invalid. So risk assessments. Risk assessments are very important in every experiment and you can be asked this in the, in the last examination as well. You are required to fill out risk assessments on ex for all experiments. It's best done in a table format like this one. So you can say a hazard. Agar plates can be a hazard because they have um, bacteria and fungi on it and it can have a risk of transmission of disease. The precaution might be to wear gloves or to keep the plate sealed and wear protective clothing. There's fire from Bunsen burner is also a huge hazard. So there might be a risk of burning your skin, clothing or causing fire in the laboratory. The precaution might be to tie your hair back, um, keep bench, clear bench and warn others that there's a Bunsen burner on nearby. Never leave it burning unattended. Working in groups. Now you may be asked about working in groups in your last exam. It is it is important to understand the advantages and disadvantages of working in a group. Can you think of any advantages or disadvantages about working in groups? Pause now to have a think. Okay, so some advantages might include the fact that it's easier working in groups, less responsibility between different people. There's quicker results and more opinions, which could mean that the experiment method is checked multiple times. This would increase validity of your results. But disadvantages might include the fact that there's increased chance of mistake if a team member does not understand what's happening in that experiment. There might be uneven distribution of responsibilities which might cause some conflict and upset some people. So more opinions also means more chances of conflict. Okay, this sums up experiments in biology.